Good day, good day, YouTubers. You know what we're gonna do today, right? We are gonna do some preventative measures today. It's gonna be a really simple mod. It's gonna be under 20 bucks, maybe 30 bucks if you guys like name brand stuff. But the one I'm gonna do for you today is gonna be under 20 bucks. And it's a really simple mod, but it's gonna save you about over $2,000. If you guys own a Lexus GX470 or a GX460, your secondary air injection pump will eventually fail. It's not if it will fail, it's a matter of when it will fail. Most cars that will hit about 80,000 miles to 100,000 miles, you're gonna start seeing signs of it. Your, your lights will come on, your, your start getting a P02445 code, a 2442, a 2443, anything that starts with a P0244 code. Your check engine lights will start popping on, your, your, your 4LO lights will pop on, and then your car is going to go into limp mode, and you're going to find out, you're going to start wondering what the hell just happened to my car. And then you're going to take it to the dealership and uh, you're going to find out that there's there has been a service bulletin that's been out for years, right? Uh, a lot of people know about this. Everybody on the Toyota forums know about this. Uh, the air injection pump assembly, the system right here, it always fails. Only because there's such a simple device in there that <clears throat> disintegrates over time. And it gets stuck within the plastic fins inside here. And I'm going to show it to you once I open it up and it always fails. So in, so out of the six GXs I've owned, um, they range from first generation to second generation, third generation, I've had two that failed on me. Okay, all the lights came on, check engine lights came on, the track lights came on, four low lights came on, and I already knew on the second time it happened that it was going to be this again, right? So, <clears throat> The good thing about Lexus and Toyota is if, if you if you take it into them, they already know what the problem is because enough people have brought this in because of this issue. But if your dealer pushes back on it, uh, it's uh, because the warranty used to be up to 50,000 miles and, and I, I forgot, five years or something like that. It, it was really some small number. If you went past that, it would... It, you would actually have to fight a little bit more just to get the dealership to do it for you. Oh, they'll do it for you if you fight long and hard enough. <clears throat> they'll always use that, oh, the warranty expired excuse, but they'll still do it for you if you fight long and hard enough. If you contact corporate and stuff like that, yeah, you make a big deal out of it, they'll, they'll do it for you. But luckily, Toyota and Lexus extended, extended their warranty because of this. They, they know the problem uh, exists so bad uh, throughout the Toyota and the Lexus community and it's all over the forums that they've extended 10 years and I believe it's 150,000 miles now. Okay, it's it's on there. I'll try to look for it for you guys. It's it's all over the websites. Okay, but this is not uh, a video about um, complaining about Lexus and, and Toyota and stuff because after all, this is still a machine and it's going to break down. So what we're going to do is for those of you that have already uh, had this issue and went through, you know, Lexus and Toyota with this issue, uh, good for you. This video is for those where the issue hasn't arised yet, meaning your car is just driving smooth and everything, but eventually it will happen and we are going to prevent it from ever happening. And this is how we're gonna do it, okay? So let's go ahead and follow me. First things first, I just wanna show you <clears throat> where you're gonna be working. This is the front of your car. Where you're gonna be working in this area, all right? To the right-hand side of your power steering canister. What you're gonna need is you're gonna need a T25 torque screw. It's a T25 torque screw head and you're going to need a flathead screwdriver that's all you're going to need okay let's go ahead and move to the car and if you look straight down here you're going to see the assembly right here your secondary air pump air injection pump right there it's very easy you got a plastic cover that covers it all you have got to do is take both hands and just pull it up just pull it up okay Set it aside. Let's flip it upside down just so you could hold screws in there. You are going to take your flathead screwdriver and you're going to pry this cap off. If you take a look at this cap, it's being held on by a bunch of tabs. Here's a tab, there's a tab, here's a tab on the bottom, there's a tab. 
the problem with this is it's kind of tricky because it requires you for you to pull it off it requires you to at least hold up three tabs pull up three tabs for it to slide out i know i'm not going to be keeping this thing so i just really don't care anymore i'm just going to go ahead and just pry the shit out of this thing until it just pops right off just use one of the ledges and it comes right off okay and let me show you a little secret here in case you're having problems trying to pry it off it was already on just like this what i did was i used a screwdriver and slid it right here and i used this wall and i used leverage and i just pried it right here using this i didn't even bother with the tabs if these tabs crack and break no big deal you're not going to use them anyways let's go ahead and remove that okay let's set it aside okay we might even just throw it away okay so now okay now that we got the cap off what we don't want to do is take off the three torque screws that is holding the housing the only torque screw we want to take off is this one single one right here on the top just remove that one okay let's go ahead and bring it up take that one torque screw and set it to the side and let's go ahead and take this out okay this is what I'm talking about inside the assembly you're gonna see this one spongy looking uh, filter element okay it, it normally sits right here and this housing goes on top of it air gets sucked in into here it gets filtered using this foam and then it goes inside this little suction fin right here all these plastic fins down here what happens over time is age moisture from your engine humidity um, air you know it 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 plays a, a, a huge part in making this break down so it's going to eventually disintegrate over time and once it disintegrates over time little bits and chunks of it it's going to get all mashed up and get sucked into all these fins while it's spinning. Once it gets sucked into all these fins, it's going to clog everything up and it's going to stop the entire system. And your system is going to fail, okay, because no secondary air is getting sucked in here. Your secondary air, its purpose is to warm up the catalytic converter in the mornings for cold starts, okay. So if this doesn't work... It's going to start ruining up all your sensors inside your car. All these sensors on your dash is starting to, it will start to light up. So what we don't want is for this to disintegrate over time. How do we do that? What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to take this piece of foam right here. And we're going to want to do this. Uh, don't know where the hell it went. Now, what we're going to want to do is, we are going to want to put this whole entire housing back without the foam filter. And you're probably thinking, what the hell are you thinking? There's a purpose for that filter. That filter is supposed to block all the crap that's getting sucked in from your engine compartment. All these leaves and dirt and grime and stuff is going to get sucked in there and without the filter element, it's going to clog your, your fins anyways. Hang in there, guys. This is part two. Coming up. Okay, guys. I took the upper housing off of the car, and I brought it over to my little workbench over here. And this is what we're going to install on it. Okay? Uh, you can go out and buy a K&N uh, filter if you want. They're like 30 bucks on Amazon. I went ahead and bought this one. It's $18. It's also a K&N type filter. The reason why I went with the cheaper no name brand one is because it had four and a half to five stars on Amazon. Also, it's also made in the USA. Made in the USA right there. So I trust it. It's uh, from the city, manufactured in the city of Fullerton, California. So it, it also has a one inch diameter, very important. The diameter of the flange right here is one inch. That's what you're looking for. So if you decide not to buy this filter, you can go ahead and buy a K&N one or any other name brand one. It's got to have a one inch opening. Okay. And there are some that are chrome aluminum tops and chrome right here. I don't recommend it. I recommend you getting the plastic rubber type. It, it holds better shock that way because it's, you know, there's going to be a lot of vibrations in your car. And right here, you're going to take it. You're going to take a flathead screwdriver and you're going to loosen it up. You're going to loosen up this band clamp right here. 
and you're going to slide actually i'm going to flip it over so it's more easy access i'm going to take this nut portion and i'm going to put it towards the front of the car and i'm going to slip this whole entire thing in there right let's take a look how deep it goes from the outside if i go ahead and take this and i slip it all the way until it hits this right here where is this tip going to stay it's going to stay about right here so it's not going to block a lot of air passage so i'm okay there's some where you can scoot all the way inside and it does you no good because not enough air is going to be jamming in there. So I'm going to go ahead and slide in there until it goes all the way inside. Okay. At this point right here, I'm going to go ahead and tighten it while it's off the car. Easier access that way. If I need to tighten it some more, I can go ahead and do it on the car. Make sure it's accessible so you can remove it later on if you need to, to wipe it clean. Okay. You want it to be pretty snug there to the point where it's not going to move on you. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this to the car. Okay, I'm, got, I'm at the car right now. I'm going to go ahead and line up this hole with the hole in the assembly right here. You also have notches on the side right here that's going to fall into the notches on the side over here. You really can't. This, they made it really dummy proof for you guys. Okay, so you're going to slip it down good now you're going to take your torque screw and you're going to line it up center you do not want to cross thread this guys make sure you tighten it in by hand okay there you go once you tighten it in by hand you can go ahead and use your little power drill here do not over tighten guys okay and there you go and there you guys have it secondary air injection pump assembly with an external k and n type filter this should last me for a long long time without any check engine lights popping up this is probably one of the cheapest mods that you can do that will probably save you a lot of headaches in the near future, especially if you have a GX470. On a GX460, the, the installation is a lot easier. On the GX470, there's quite a, f a few more steps that you have to take. Um, Got to take off the manifold and stuff like that. And, and if you don't know, if you're, if you're not handy with tools and stuff, then I suggest you start looking up YouTube on how to take off, how to get to your SAIF system, okay, on the GX470. GX460, simple. Uh, what was that, like 15 minutes or less? Okay, so um, Cane filters, 30 bucks. The one that I bought called Uni, also made in USA, 18 bucks. I'll send you the link on Amazon. Why didn't I do this a long time ago when this problem started? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to say five, six years ago or something like that. Around five years ago, uh, problems like this uh, started to surface on the Internet. Um, and people were trying to find a way to bypass the SAIS system. And somebody, um, I, I forgot his name, or, or I, I was reading up on one of the I Hate Mud forums, and they came up with this idea. And I saw this idea uh, a long time ago. Um, I just didn't do anything about it because Lexus and Toyota took my car in and they fixed it for free. That's why I didn't do that mod, right? But this is for those of you that haven't um, gotten to the point where all your check engine lights and everything came up yet. So this is more preventative. So you don't have to bother taking it to the dealership and getting a rental car and stuff like that because the rental car they're going to give you is probably some piece of shit station wagon lexus or something right so cheap mod save you twenty five hundred dollars and a lot of headaches and i really want to give credit to the guy that came up with this and i'll probably put in the the, the body of the description for you along with the amazon link to this uh, k n type filter okay thanks for watching guys peace